Yes, I know a lot of you have really been waiting for this video and by reading the title and clicking on this video, I'm pretty sure that you have your heart set on either one of these cars. Today is the battle of the sporty hatchback, the legendary Volkswagen Polo versus the new kid on the block, which is the Hyundai i20 N-Line. Having reviewed both of these together in a comparison in their stock form and covering a lot of examples of a stage 2 Polo and N-Line, so we thought, why not just compile both of these two fantastic stage 2 cars and see which one is the outright, no questions asked, no cap, best sporty hatchback in India for now. Let's start by talking about the blocks themselves. Both are 1 litre blocks with 3 cylinders. The Polo gets a 998cc TSI engine that pushes out a respectable 108 bhp in its stock form with a very healthy 175Nm of torque. And the i20 N-Line sports the 999cc TGDI block that pushes out 118 bhp and slightly less torque at 172Nm of torque. But of course, these push out a fair bit more now that they're stage 2. The mods on this Polo include an Automec full system exhaust, a forged blow-off valve and Bilstein B4 dampers with Eibach springs. It runs a stage 2 ECU remap from Superchips that now makes 147 bhp and 283 Nm of torque. Oh, and how could I miss those sexy looking BBS 17-inch rims? On the end line, the owner has fitted a similar setup to the Polos. Uh, you got a bar exhaust catback system and a Remus Valvetronic muffler. The airbox has been deleted for this conical air filter that is from BMC and the tune is actually in-house developed at Auto Helpers which they have uh, just started developing in-house tunes and this is one of their in-house ones that can produce 147 bhp and 240 Nm meters of torque. Now already the i20 falls short in one area when compared to the Polo and that's the gearbox. For some reason Hyundai thought that giving a DCT and an IMT transmission with the N-Line was the route to go. Now this particular example is the DCT variant which is still okay but the IMT is definitely an utter disappointment. VW learned from their mistakes and gave the new 1 litre TSI engine a proper 6 speed manual which enhances the driving experience even more. But Hyundai, instead of giving a proper manual transmission, decided to go for this gimmicky IMT gearbox, which is very unintuitive while driving. Remember, even the experience matters just as much and the Polo definitely takes the cake in terms of providing that experience. Have you ever been tired of scouring through the internet and searching for a car and just finding the same uninteresting cars that do not satisfy that car guy fire within you? Well, TDH Classifieds is your one-stop solution for all of your problems. Anything from a legendary classic to a family sedan to a dailyable hatchback, TDH Classifieds will definitely satisfy the car guy inside you. So what are you waiting for? Go to TDH Classifieds and get yourself the car of your dreams. Driving a souped-up Polo never disappoints. It's such a ready car, it's so punchy, the dimensions are beautiful and this 1 litre TSI is so nice. The surge is so linear, especially in this super chips tune. The turbo spool on this 1 litre TSI, especially with this super chips tune is so nice and linear that makes it very enjoyable even through city traffic. And when it comes to the Polo itself, it's just such a good platform because it has so much support from everywhere. Every brand has worked on a Polo. There are parts for anything, aftermarket, uh, motorsport performance, you can name it and you can get it for a Polo. The Polo is as fun in the corners as it is in a straight line. When it comes to the cornering ability of the Polo, the Polo is definitely something that 
has been a little numb on the steering wheel but it's always had a very 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 predictable chassis which also makes it a very nice first car the owner of this polo is actually an 18 year old friend of ours and he has absolutely loved this car because it is not intimidating at all but you can have so much fun with it and it is the best learning curve to be able to handle this in its stage 2 form is super involving it's bilstein b4 dampers and ibach springs do a fantastic job at keeping the roads and the grip nice and optimum with those ps4 tires you are never lost out of control apart from that little numbness in steering that has always been very prominent in polos but when it comes to the interior that's where the polo takes a little bit of a hit Yep, like it or not, the Polo's interior now looks ancient and moreover rudimentary. VWs are known for their no-nonsense interiors and just give you the basics. And the Polo is no different except the interior is now over 10 years old. Yes, you do get Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, cruise control and that's it. Whereas the i20's interior gets a digital instrument cluster, a much better infotainment system with wireless connectivity and the i20 is just much more modern. But build quality is also a factor and the VW still stays strong with a sturdy finish. But there's no denying that the i20 is definitely the more usable car overall with more room in the back and more boot space. But if these plus points mean nothing to you, the Polo is the better car for performance. Or is it? So, the i20 N-Line has been with us for maybe 1-2 years and it has been selling like hot cakes and mainly i think the reason for that is that the direct competitor the polo is not on sale anymore this has definitely taken some pages off of the polo book read them and been like this is not how we're going to do it we're going to try and make a better car it definitely shows because this has taken the good parts of the polo which were a nice punchy engine dual clutch gearbox and really good driving dynamics and added it with a little bit of modern touches a huge infotainment screen with wireless apple carplay uh, android auto and a lot of goodies like navigation and a fully digital uh, speedometer that tells you everything that you need to be told with some paddle shifters it's really nice the interior is big there are modern touches everywhere it's it's so young with red pin striping everywhere and biggest point is that it's so much more roomier than the polo that was one huge drawback that Volkswagen didn't think of this is slightly longer in terms of wheelbase but it's definitely visible at the back your parents will definitely love you for having more back seat for them now where the polo is definitely a step above the end line is in outright dynamics performance and tuning the end line is better than the polo in some areas out of the box the end line has much better suspension which is stiff when you want it and compliant when you don't the steering feel is much better and the braking setup is stronger too with the endline getting rear disc brakes. The endline's chassis too is very good like the Polos but where the endline falls short is in the engine and gearbox department like we said. The 1 liter TGDI just isn't as punchy as the 1 liter TSI if you go head to head. But the Auto Helper Stage 2 map has done an amazing job in bringing the power levels right up there with the Polos in Stage 2 configuration. But there is one problem with the end line and that's aftermarket support. Most of the parts you see in this car are custom built and not bolt on like the Polo. The exhaust, the intake, the piping and even the map is all custom made and fair play to auto help us for creating such a potent machine. But the aftermarket is yet to catch up with the end line. When it comes to looks, you cannot deny that the Polo has started to show its age, but in its defense with a couple of aesthetic mods like these beautiful rims a lip kit maybe a spoiler the car looks back in its place and it's so timeless that i definitely love it but talking about the end line modernity is back in its place with a huge grille drls dual tone colors sharp edges everywhere and an interior that actually looks like the 21st century this is definitely a looker compared to that one but 
if standing out is everything that you want, this one is the option. But if being subtle and understated, if, the, if that is the right word, the polo definitely hits the mark. Now looks are subjective, but there isn't a nice way of saying it. The polo looks quite old. Yes, the fancy wheels and other cosmetic parts do help change the look, but it just doesn't have that modernity anymore. Whereas the i20 also has its drawbacks because of its boy racer looks and red accents and flashy wheels and aggressive elements, many older gentlemen and women might shy away from it. But before we conclude this video, we want to give a shout out to Auto Helpers for lending over their Stage 2 i20 N-Line. If you are in Mumbai and want to remap or build an i20 N-Line, these guys make some awesome remaps for the car. They of course work on other metal too like Polos, Jettas, Loras, you name it. So do check them out. Their socials are also tagged in the description. Also, one more thing we want to address. We know you guys want us to test these machines to their limits with acceleration tests and whatnot. But that sort of stuff is very difficult to arrange, especially in a city like Mumbai. We will try our utmost best to bring you the most action possible in 2023. Now, when it comes to the score sheet, these two could be blowing punches at each other all day and we might still not come up with an answer. But when it comes to the straight facts, the Polo has been here for maybe 10-15 years and the aftermarket support for it is immense. You're not going to be having any troubles finding parts for it or even finding parts to upgrade them. So that is definitely the project car of my choice. But when it comes to a overall really good sporty hatchback of the modern 21st century, the N-Line definitely has my back because it's got a really nice interior, it's got very good looks and your family will be really happy with the amount of space that is inside. Well, when it comes to project cars as the N-Line, you will have to wait a little bit so that the aftermarket industry can keep up and maybe build some custom parts for this. But when it comes to performance, the Polo still has it, but we are in our hopes that this gets some good mods and gets some support. So hopefully if you get one of these, wait for a while and maybe you can get some good mods for it. That's all from me. Thank you so much. See you in the next one.